is there anything that makes human cognition special? Is an interesting question. Many people would say that there's loads of things that make um, human cognition special, the most obvious of which is language. No other animal reads and writes, to put it simply. Um, the issue, I suppose, is whether we think we're unique in having this ability to think and reason about the world. So whether it's a difference in kind, as Darwin put it, or whether it's differences in degrees, that animals might have elements of these abilities, but at a much more rudimentary or more basic level. So it's claimed that some animals are capable of language and many different animals communicate, but at issue is whether that is related to cognition. Well, I suppose it depends on your definition of cognition. If you want to include learning and perception in your definition of cognition, then clearly forms, many forms of communication are learnt. Birdsong would be a classic example. If you want to have the stricter definition that I started with of the ability to think and reason, then you wouldn't want all forms of communication to be examples of cognition. You'd want to really be able to show that the that the behaviour in question was much more likely to be controlled by thought processes as opposed to, for example, simple trial and error learning, or um, if it was a hardwired behaviour, you'd want to rule that out as being evidence of cognition. So planning is quite a good example to make the distinctions of this. So if I was to describe the behaviour of a digger wasp that makes a little burrow, and then it goes off and collects caterpillars to provision the burrow so that when the eggs that it lays in the burrow hatch into larvae, they have food. You could argue that this has elements of, of prospection, that the animal is, going, is taking action now for things that will happen in the future. And at, at issue would be whether you want to say, well, is this evidence of planning? It's future-oriented behaviour, but is it planning? Well, in the case of the digger wasp, we we're pretty sure it isn't planning because the animal goes through a series of robotic actions. It isn't sensitive to the consequences. So it's much more like a washing machine that goes through a series of cycles. And in the case of the digger wasp, if you disrupt the behavior partway through, so the, the female digger wasp has just gone off to get the caterpillars and then she leaves them outside the entrance while she goes in and lays her eggs. If you then go and move the food to a new location. She doesn't go and get it. She just continues on her robotic cycle. So in that case, you'd say, well, yes, it's future-oriented behavior, but no, it's not planning. It can be controlled by a much simpler process. In this case, a, a hardwired series of robotic actions. You might also want to be able to rule out learning through trial and error. So if your animal has simply discovered that doing X is, is rewarding in some way and then they do more of it, then again, you wouldn't, you'd want to rule out planning. When I teach this to my students, I often show them this wonderful clip from the BBC Animal Minds video in which there's a dog packing a suitcase. And, it, you know, at first sight, this would really look like packing. It, and it says something like, if your dog leaves home, you know you've been watching too much television. It was taken from a cute little Spanish TV advert and the dog puts the little hairbrush and its dog bowl into the suitcase and then sort of strokes and looks adoringly at this photograph. But of course, in that case, the animal has been trained explicitly to do so. Each of those single steps has been carefully shaped and each action rewarded. So yes, the animal is going through a series of steps that if a human were to do it, you would say, well, surely that's an example of planning, surely packing your suitcase for, to move house or to go on holiday is planning. But in the case of the dog, it had been explicitly trained to do so. So we also need to rule out, rule out learning as a possible explanation.